I have two slots open. All right. Hello. Welcome back. We, uh, we're going to jump right back in at uh, the yes. moment. At the moment, you are currently in this sort of entry hallway, which is obviously intended to impress people who are visiting the, uh, the hut. And uh, you just figured out how to let this poor person that Baba Yaga probably didn't even know was there escape and get out into the prime material plane where I'm sure he'll do just fine. Okay. Now, he doesn't okay. know no, what he doesn't know what North is. Know him by like sending him off into the world by himself. No, he's got he's got really <laughs> detailed directions from Dell. I'm sure he'll be able to be f just fine, and he's got some magic, right? Like and he's so he now has food. He'll he'll he's figure it water. out. He'll figure it out. So and there's all of the animals outside can talk to him. So you know. I believe that Charlotte um, very quickly went to work identifying the cloak, which takes ten <laughs> minutes as a ritual. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so what are other people doing during the 10 minutes that uh, Charlotte is spending identifying this cloak? Well, I'm investigating the mushroom. Is it an edible mushroom? Give me a medicine. No, give me a... I would normally say chef's tools, but I, I forgot to put it in there. Um, so just go ahead and make me a... Um, make me a medicine check. Uh... that actually go in there? Yeah, it did. Um, yeah. It's, Medicine's it's, not my highest it's, thing. It's edible to somebody, but like you would have to do a little Maybe bit more once. analysis on it before you would stuff it in your face, right? You, you, yeah. Oh yeah. You know well enough to know not to, to eat unfamiliar mushrooms unless, unless you're sure yes. that they're safe. Sure. Um, what's Calder up to during the 10 minutes while Charlotte's doing this? Uh, Calder is... Uh, wanting to, but he's curious about the magical items, but he's also like essentially keeping watch. There's nothing for him to do, so he just try and make himself useful. Um, I'm gonna say that as someone who is a, a sort of attuned to the plane of of the Shadowfell, um, mm -hmm. as as you're walking around, continuing to look at these these statues, you realize that you're pretty sure something is bound to these statues that would have really fucked your shit up if you had messed with the statues, like if you had actually damaged them. There's, you're, you're not quite sure what it is that's bound to them, but there is something nasty bound to these statues uh, to protect them if they, if they are attacked. Um, and I don't want to fuck with it. So. Yes. Uh, and then Maven, what are, what are you up to? This is all very new to you. What are you up to during this? Um... Yeah, it is all new to me. I'm mostly um, just keeping an eye out on everybody, but not in really the same way that Calder is. I'm trying to keep an eye out, eye out on the party to make sure that they're okay. You know, I'm kind of worriedly watching Charlotte a little, make sure that like, she isn't gonna like explode, <laughs> you know? She's not really sure how this works, but you know. I um, think you see as Charlotte is working her magic a little bit, maybe you haven't looked this close before, but Charlotte has rainbow irises, which are, I am sure in this light, just get, just like reflecting crazy lights. <laughs> yeah. And in fact, if you look close, her eyes and the, the material of the cloak that she's working with kind of sort of sync up in certain places. Wow. So Charlotte, the item is a cloak of scintillating colors. I have put it into the chat. Um, it has three charges. It regains 1d3 every day at dawn. When you wear it, you can use an action and expend a charge to cause it to display a shifting pattern of dazzling light and colors until the end of your next turn. Um, it sheds bright light in a 30-foot radius, dim light for another 30. Creatures that can see you have disadvantage on attack rolls against you during this time. And any creature in the bright light that you can see when it's activated has to make a wisdom save that or become stunned. That can see you that when can the rope's power is activated. You, yeah. Yeah. Or, else it, or else it gets stunned. Stunned. <laughs> you know, for the, yeah, this will be fun for the tank. Uh... It does require attunement. Uh, it does also, require any attunement. Any creature that can see you, you can't target thunderfoe. No. 
Uh, but we do, we can solve that by being further away than thirty feet. But. Or or but by that's, that's it's an important thing to notice specifically yes. for melee people. It is yeah, it is yeah, important yeah. to note, and and I am willing to be like if you set it up ahead of time. Sure, folks, close their eyes when you activate it. That's fine. But like, it has to be something that you say ahead of time. If you activate it without anybody knowing what's happening, then yeah, it's everybody. Okay. Yeah. She will. She will put it on, hood down. She. We don't have the time to attune to it right now. Anybody. So she'll just. She'll carry it for now. Oh, uh, Cole's gonna flip through the book that was dropped. It. Oh yeah. Hands it over. She can't read it. It's not inlaid with drawing dwarven runes. I'm assuming. <laughs> It's definitely it's a spell book, real. which makes it kind of gobbledygook to Calder. Like, Calder, yep. you, you, you know how wizards work. You've held and handled wizard spell books before. You know what it is. But you don't have the slightest clue what any of these things do. Mm -hmm. uh, it would take me time to decipher these. Do you speak it's primordial? Is it written in primordial? No, it's, a, it's just that it's a wizard spell book. Right. I mean, I can take a look at that when I can set up my system for taking a look at that later. Yes, so we'll put that aside for now. Pockets it. It's so, just like yeah. pocket size. It, it is. It's very yeah. small. Over the course of like these 10 minutes or whatever, um, Dell pulled out like a prism, put it on the ground and set up basically the hollow deck version of a chess game. And is playing with like, there's a book in his hand because Calder's doing some other shit. Um, and he's just setting up like things. Um, it is um, it is technically dragons dragon chess, but like the pieces aren't necessarily like dragon shaped. But like you know, he's playing it as if it is. Is this like a like a standard like real life? Chess it's, set? It's, it's a travel. It's a travel. It's a travel. It's a, I love except it. that it's like it's not from Faerun. Yeah. So it's, a, it's, it's a normal it's, chess set, but because we're we're from Faerun, where we have dragon chess. <laughs> Yeah, love well, it. No, actually, I'd say the dragon chess is slightly different. It's closer to like shogi, yeah. um, but like you know, it's just he's playing with the pieces there as if they are dragon chess. But it's like you know, this is from the Star Trek universe or some shit. <laughs> yeah. So it's like three dimensional. It's not three dimensional, but it's a hologram. Ah. Okay. So it Mammon is... will come over and just kind of look at it. Yeah. What are you doing? Well, I was doing some practice runs. I don't. Do you play? I've never played. It looks like chess. Yeah, it's it's. Yes. Uh, I'm. It's basically dragon chess for all intents and purposes. Mm, it wasn't exactly my thing. It's it's very beautiful though. Thank you. I don't think we have time for you to teach me, but perhaps at one point. Yeah, I'm. I'd be willing to pass on the skill if we have the time. Um, my my wife gave this to me. So. Oh, it's always nice to have the things from our yeah. significant others. Calder has like has just like this bewildered like expression at that sentence. Yeah, I'll be honest. Right. But my daughter can beat me, so it's fine. <laughs> We're gonna talk about that. Um, as Charlotte stands up and puts the cloak on herself. So, the garden next? That's what I was uh, hearing? Looking for yes. the apples still? I'm gonna, like, hit some, like, some, like, taps on the sides of the crystal that, like, just saves it, and then shrinks it back down, and he's gonna pop that back into a container. <laughs> All right. Uh, garden, I suppose. Ugh. Yeah, that's I what I was thinking. I am tired of gardens. As a side note, I'm going to I'm just going to mention it's not super important, but it's probably about relative to your your internal clocks, 8:39 p.m. at this point. Yeah. We could take a rest here. It's up um, to you, but like it's I, I mean, it mention, doesn't affect like, me much, but this seems like this would be a very hard room to sleep in. Yeah. <laughs> also, weren't we given the impression last game that taking like a long rest is not good anyway? Like, we were trying to get through this? Like, that no, maybe no. Bobby Yaga was we were, we were, um, we couldn't take a long rest outside of the hut due to the fact that it may or may not 
fucking move. Uh, now that we're in here. Yeah, now we're inside. So we could technically go back to the kitchen, but that is like the doorway. I'm still fresh. I think we can we can push on work. Besides, some gardens I mean, are lovely just, to take a nap It's only in. been 12 hours or something since we last left. This is less of a freshness yeah. for, like, resources and more of just general energy. So um, I think we could go for another hour or so without yeah. having to rest. The, um, the door into the garden is, is covered in kind of fungal growths, mm. but it's oh, unlocked. Boy, and it's openable. And when you open it, there's another sort of black void in between you and the other side of the door. I'm going to go ahead and drop that uh, map now. And I'm going to share the new map once I have all of you in. Who is entering first? <laughs> um, I'll be holding the door, so I'll be going last. Okay. So all I'll right. Do we need to, like, what's your like dex? What's your dex? <laughs> no, don't, don't, don't do that to me. I'll I'm, put Mason and Charlotte in the front. <laughs> What's your dex? Call her in the middle. Don't pull my career. I'm curious. Charlotte's not too high, so let's do dex, Mason. Thirteen. <laughs> yeah, Charlotte's on, on the fourteen. All right. But my strength, strength is We don't 18. have to ask these questions. Yes, I'm working on it. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. It looks like the holy hand grenade, and that makes me worried. <laughs> okay. Looks like so. these colors are awful and bad. We're in the black light room. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so why um, are we in this train car? <laughs> All right. So this is going through the green door from the box text. rainbow room. And yes, we still have we still have two animals uh, c uh, coming up behind you. Um, but some box text. A curtain of purple vines hangs over the entrance, beyond which extends a large domed room. Okay. Violet-covered fungal growths cover most of the floor, extending along the lengths of leafless trees, up the walls. And in fact, like the the 10-foot wide walkway that you're on is actually kind of elevated above essentially a forest of plant life and fungal growth underneath you. Yeah. Cool. Um, the pungent smell of earthy vegetation and rot wafts uh, gently on the thick, humid air. A stone walkway free of purple fungus cuts a path to the middle of the dome where a fountain spits oily water into the air from a round, shallow basin. The walkway extends to two chambers at opposite ends of the dome where different colored fungal growths cluster uh, on the floor and over several crates, one orangish and the other crimson. The light in the room is coming from these fungal growths. So you should be able to see like a little bit of a red light coming out of the south room, a little bit of an orange light coming out of the north room. And it smells, it smells earthy. It smells like you're, you're in the middle of a fungus garden. So, Not exactly the kind of garden I was expecting. Lovely. I don't suppose anybody That's sees any well. apple trees anywhere, do they? Definitely no see, apple trees. I definitely did not see any apple trees. Right. Mm. Okay. And then directly across from us, past the fountain, does, uh, is there's, that another? There's another, another door on the other side, yes. Okay. All right. Well, um, can I get a nature check? Yeah. How high is the ceiling? The ceiling is 50 feet high, except for the chambers to the north and the south, which are somewhat smaller. They have like 20 foot high ceilings. And again, the, the violet fungus, cr you know, crawls all the way up the, the walls and like connects at the top and the ceiling. You are you are three hundred and sixty degrees surrounded by by mushrooms. Um, that was a two on nature. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Those are definitely some kind of fungus, or it what might about? be a tree. <laughs> um, could I get also like a survival check? Um, yeah, sure. So, eatable? 
and or will it strangle us to death? So with an 18, I'm going to say that what you get is that, yeah, so so you're not close enough to the red or the orange fungus to tell, but this 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 violet stuff underneath you is it probably not great for humans. Like they'd probably get stomach aches, but it would be amazing for ogres and it would be amazing for for um, certain other other creatures. Um, also, with a 18 survival, it seems well tended. Okay. It, it, it seems like this is cultivated. This is not just random wild growth. Hmm. I'll, I'll relay like that. Ugh. Well, it's not edible um, for any of us. But, you know, maybe if we were like uh, ogres or something, you'd be able to stomach acid. So, um, Calder, as, as you move forward... Uh, there's a fountain in the center. It's filled with oily, cold water that leaves kind of a greasy stain in its wake. It gurgles and it bubbles, and um, the area around it is covered in sort of grimy, off-white tiles. The water pulls in from some sort of pump that you can't see, and uh, Dell, as as you're kind of looking at the um, the water coming out, there is some magical... Oh, oh Calder, you also have uh, Detect Magic up. The, the water has magical properties as well. Hmm. All right. Uh, can I uh, get a, like an idea of the School of Magic? Yeah. I'm going to say give me an Arcana check. Ooh. Okay, 22. You get transmutation magic. You feel like this fountain is is producing a potion of some sort, but you're not sure what it does. Hmm. Uh, Power will produce an empty glass vial and will, as an experiment, do control water to, like, hop a dose of the potion into the, into the bottle. Totally. Yeah, if only we had hyacin. <laughs> I'm not going to taste it. I don't trust anything. Right now. What do we need hyacinth for? Didn't she? Didn't they taste a potion in one of our like early sessions? Oh, like the fountain of fire breathing? The was that fountain hyacinth? of fire breathing. Was that hyacinth or who was that? I have no remember. That was almost three years ago. So as starting with hyacinth. As you all are kind of gathering around the um, the the fountain, and as Calder is is sort of taking a dose of this to see to see maybe what it does with an identified later, a number of of small creatures begin to sort of rise around you, like climbing their way to the tops of the um, the purple vegetation. Fantastic. And I'm sharing with you. An image <laughs> oh boy. of what a Vegapygmy <laughs> looks like, except there's two very important differences. Okay, first oh. off, the ones that are around you are again that same vibrant violet color that the um, that the fungus is, and one of them, the one that steps forward and addresses you, has an incredibly luxurious mop of hair on his head that kind of goes down and behind him. And the rest of them don't. Like, the rest of them have little growths on the top like you see in the picture. But, but the one that approaches you has, like, 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 long purple hair. And he approaches you. And he says, Welcome. Welcome. Ah, I see you like my beard, yes? I have a most magnificent beard. It is the beard of a king, for I am King Beard. And to be clear, every time he says beard, he is pointing and touching the hair on the top of his head. His face is totally, absolutely clean shaven. Or not even clean shaven. It's absolutely like bear. Uh, real real quick. Beards for the beard experts. Sorry. Uh, above the table, real quick. Uh, I'm going to nope out of this room, do the fungus part of it. So yeah. I'm going to take my headphones off. Somebody let me know when we're done in the fungus room. Fair enough. Okay. 
Thank you. Uh, greetings, King Beard. He s- stands up and brushes himself off. Your, uh, your Majesty, uh, we are simple travelers, and we are perhaps a little lost. We seek direction. Where where you want to go? We are looking for things. Hmm. You found things. There are things there. There are things there. We are looking for particular things, such as an apple. Mm. Or more accurately, an apple tree. Hmm. Grape shirt. There is, there is an orchard somewhere. Um, but we don't really leave this, this space. Um, That's unfortunate. Actually, there is a thing you might be able to help us with if, if you have some time. Oh. Um, by the way, um, so these, these plant creatures would not normally speak common. Like anyone who, who has any, uh, without a role, anyone who understands plant creatures, which some of you have taken it upon yourself to understand plant creatures, um, <laughs> these things don't normally speak common. There's something, there's something a little bit odd going on here, probably coming from the hut. Mm-hmm. And, and maybe I, I help you find your, your apple? Maybe I can find, help you find your apple. Perhaps. That would be what, lovely. Need, what do you need help? Well, you see, we make food. Food for ogres. Hmm? Ogres oh, bring meat. Og- oh, there are ogres here. Yes, yes. Ogres, um, ogres are guards. You've not oh. seen ogres with chicken feet. Mm-hmm. Nope. We have not seen any ogres um, with or without chicken feet. Um... You, I provide, we provide food for ogres. Ogres bring meat. Meat goes into mushrooms. Mushrooms grow. Mushrooms go into ogres. Ogres find meat. Cycle. Yes? I see. All right. Um, With you so far. That is the way a good kitchen works, yes. The, she says, holding her beard. (laughs) The Violet Tribe was 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 given control over Garden by Mistress Baba Yaga to feed ogres, but some some others are are not do not agree. Some others think that we should go and take meat instead of waiting for ogres to give us meat, and some some have been cultivating strange things in their in their rooms. Uh, the I take it you are referring to the orange and red. Mm. The rust caps and and the orange rot tribe. Yes, they they think we should go and take meat from others, and we think we should wait until ogres give us meat. And we don't want war between the tribes. But they not talk to us anymore. They won't. They won't negotiate. Would this not be more one uh, up to grandmother? Grandmother does not necessarily care about such things. She leaves it to others, like King Beard. Mm-hmm. This is my this is my place, and I should be able to control it. But if I if I attack, I I could lose. I could lose mine, and then who knows or what will happen? Can, and or probably look at two thirds, or leave yourself weak enough for the other to take. Hmm. Can they hear us? Probably not, no. All right. I have a bit of advice then. Hmm. Since Purple Violet Tribe, is that who you are? Hmm. Since you are the ones who are having the most amicable dealings with the ogres, I suggest you wait until the ogres come by next and then employ their help. Hmm. Ogres can kill. Ogres can kill. Yes. Yes. Um. You really necessary to kill them? Are they that violent? Uh, other tribes not speak with us anymore. We send delegates. Delegates don't come back. Mm. Mm. So yes, I think if you're wanting to establish control again, you need to use every arm that's available to you. And it sounds like the ogres, you're still feeding them and they still bring you food. So they sound like a valuable ally. Why don't you go ahead and give me a, 
Um, that sounds like a persuasion check. And if someone yeah. else wants to assist, you can. Uh, sure, I'll assist with the help, with the help action. So go ahead and okay. take advantage on that. All right, come on. Nice. Avoided yeah. the one. Not bad. 24. Ma mainly, Charlotte is suggesting the ogres and waiting for the ogres as a way for us to be able to continue through the room without being waylaid as to your assistance. Your, your, your words are wise. Almost as wise as King Beard's beard. Yes. I will speak with ogres. I will speak with the ogres and they will help, I'm sure. We, we provide them with their food, so they will want to help. Um, you wanted an, an apple. I do. You, yes. Uh, maybe. We, we specifically need an apple still on the tree. We have an to apple. Oh, we know, you know where this, or the, I believe you said it was an orchard. Yes. Yes. But, but, uh, our tribe knows nothing beyond these walls. Uh, perhaps the, the kitchen. Uh, apples go to kitchens. Yes. Perhaps if you go to the kitchen, they they will know where you can find this this apple tree. Do you know where the kitchens are? Hmm. No, I'm sorry. Hmm. Sometimes sometimes ogres come and they take mushrooms and they take them to kitchen. They go out the door you came in, but I don't know where I don't know where they go. That is fair. Does anything um, ever go in or come out of the other door? Hmm. Guests sometimes go out or come in that door. They sometimes open the door and they look in and then they do something with their noses and then they leave. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell me anything about this fountain? Oh, fountain. Yes. Uh, the water is, is infused with our, with our, our fungus, with our, with our product. And yeah. it's, it's, it's mostly beneficial. Yeah. May, may I ask what it does? It depends on who drinks it. For for us, it is nourishment. For you, it could be good. It could be oh, bad. Right, you're you're like an eighth fungus on your father's side, right, Calder? Mm, the, 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 that was uh, yes, he was in the family, but it was by marriage. <laughs> All right then. Well, a, pit, a pity aunt on this pit. <laughs> We are oh. guests of Grandmother, and so I believe we should do as the other guests do and continue on past that door. I wish you well in your plight. They'll give like a, a little salute, and all of them around, or all of the, the little veggie pygmies around will also give the same salute, and then they'll kind uh, of melt away back into the, the underbrush, as it were. Caller will, when he gives the salute, Caller will give, will offer a respectful sh uh, uh, short bow worthy of another lord, because Caller does not have the highest opinion of other lords anyway. So are we, are we going back out the way you came, or are we going towards the, the other side? The far door. I think we're going to the, the door. door. Yeah, the guest door. Okay. All right. I mean, if y'all are okay with it. I'm okay with it. Like this is uh nope don't don't want like this is not a thing I I care to engage. Okay, M, if you are watching the um the subtitles, you are now able to get back in. We have left the garden. Mm -hmm. I'll open the door and mention it. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I rolled high on that first one. <laughs> Yay. Hey, out the other side. No nice. combat needed. Excellent. Yay. Okay. I'll reopen all of my tabs again. Give me a moment. I closed everything. I didn't want to look at it. It was making me feel sick. Okay. So Okay, we're good. We're good. So so you push through and and um get to the other side. Um before you do, M, give me like like two minutes really quick. I just realized something that I have to do, so give me like two oh. minutes. Yeah. Some other box text. Um, 
less that and more king beard is so impressed with your with your um with your solution that he offers you a he offers you a like a like a like a toadstool and hanging from the toadstool in common it says eat me and he says i offer you a bite this i know is good for human Well, thank you. And whatever you are, he'll look at uh, at, at Maven. <laughs> and whatever you are, he'll look at Calder. <laughs> this this good food, promise. Would it be good for either of them? He's just pointing at the badger and the and the giant crab. He'll shrug. I thank you for this gift, and hopefully, oh, maybe um, we'll come back through that door as guests again and find you in a much better situation. Oh, and uh, you wouldn't have to know if the, that door leads to the inner layer, would you? I don't know what that is. Okay, then don't worry about it. I'm sure it is beneath my, his Majesty's notice. Um, if 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 you want bite, take bite. I I keep this; it grows back. Oh, ah, okay. okay. Yeah, sure. Like, like uh... sure. Like this. This is dumb. I'll do it. <sighs> Should I roll an insight first? It's up to you. No, nah, she's just, she's gonna like as he finds it, breaks off a tiniest little piece, and yeah, she'll eat it. <laughs> now I know I know Dell's not going to. So what's uh, Maven up to? Maven will see Charlotte take a, a bite, and well, it is truly impolite <laughs> to refuse any food offered. Looks at all of them, and then takes a bite. I need the three of you. Um, and, and M, you can come back. Um, I need the three of you to roll a d6, please. Oh, yeah. Okay. A four. A four. And a two. Okay. So four. Hold we on. Ate a little bit of something okay. on the way out. So, so Calder and Charlotte. Calder and Charlotte. You take a bite or, or a small amount of this, this, uh, this mushroom and you feel like everything has cleared. Like your mind has completely cleared. All the fog is gone. Until the next long rest, the two of you have plus four intelligence. Damn. So I'm adjusting that like, on your sheets right now. Like on our actual scores? <laughs> like your ac the that what means that Charlotte, ha Charlotte has a 22 intelligence now. <laughs> Jeez. Until correct <laughs> and I could, pass, I could pass algebra and um uh maven you get a plus four to your dexterity oh, until the next good. until the next long rest nice nice thank you so much oh, yes. uh, thank you so much your highness this is amazing you're right this is very good and with that you will Wait, exit we leave yes all right out the other door. Where are we going? Out the other door. So this is the guest door mm -hmm. from the fungal gardens. Okay. I have another map to share with you, though I don't know how thoroughly we are going to explore this particular room. We will see how far we get. Um, I am putting you all on the map, and then I am sharing it with you. Um, you're coming in from where again? From the fungal gardens. Okay, cool. So so you walk through the door, and there's this weird shift from horizontal to vertical while you're in the black hallway. <laughs> and, and you suddenly feel yourself descending. And I need a dexterity check from everybody as you are all released from, like, the, the ceiling of this room. It's, it's a very short drop. But I need an acrobatics. I need an acrobatics check from everybody. Acrobatics or dex? Uh, acrobatics dex. specifically, please. I'm sorry. A twelve. You're you're if aiming you for. Have dex. You're aiming for a ten or better. Hey, so it yeah. looks like everyone lands on their feet. So so you're just not expecting it, right? You go horizontal, but when you enter, you're horizontal. But when you exit, you're vertical, and you. You drop about 10, 20 feet to the floor, but you all manage to, to keep your feet. Um, this Oops, room just flies. 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and drop you into the room really quick. Now, some of these maps aren't great, and the the um, the grid that I came up with wasn't quite perfect to the grid that's that's drawn there, so I apologize for that. Um, I'm just dropping you all on here. Maven, Charlotte, share. Okay. So you find yourself in a room, in a square room. Now, those chambers off to the north, south, east, and west, you can't actually see into them yet. There is kind of a weird warping effect that, that shields what's going on in the other rooms. Is that an Abrams? This room is large and square, about 50 feet across and 50 feet tall, holding a tall tree with blue bark and enormous green leaves in each corner. Motes of white and yellow light dance around the trees like dust in a ray of sunshine. A large, unknown metal vehicle sits on the ground near one of the strange blue trees, and opposite that hangs a canoe with an attached outrigger, all suspended from the ceiling on delicate silver chains. The canoe is white and decorated with numerous charcoal sigil er, symbols. In the center of each wall, a rectangular section about the size of an entryway shimmers and ripples like cloth in an unfelt breeze. And yes, you're looking at a panzer. Uh, is this the armory? What a strange location. Are those, and like, Charlotte asks Swoops telepathically, and Swoops is like, yeah, it looks like trees. Um, I don't, I don't usually expect trees to be in an armory. Uh, right? As you're as you're looking around, a a panel in the ceiling again closes shut. Ah, like that's what we fell through. Which is what you fell through. Yes. Huh. Well, what kind of trees are these? Nature check. Nature check. Yeah. Maybe somebody with a high <laughs> intelligence should do a nature check. Please, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, maybe I should do a nature check. Wow. <laughs> this is going well. Wow. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I don't have an intelligence score. Listen. So, um, actually, seeing these, or so, so when you like walk up and put your hand on one of these trees, Charlotte, you so actually pretty. get like a like a like an icy like like fist grips your heart because it's like the moment you touch it you realize this is a tree like from the Feywild and suddenly you're getting flashbacks of of your experiences with a certain patron and and this uh you think if 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 your memory is correct and the by the feel of the bark you've been told that the um, the leaves should be blue and perfect stars. If 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 what you've been told is correct, the leaves of this tree should be perfect blue stars. She yanks her hand back and says a swear in draconic. Of <laughs> There's also a door nearby that uh, that that tree Swoops. that you're at. Are yeah. you all right? Yeah, no, it's just it's um. There's some intense fey energy coming off of this tree. Mm. Um, are the what do the leaves look like? She asks out loud. They are in fact blue and perfectly star shaped. They're very pretty. They're blue. They're they're shaped like stars. They're they're like oh, they're very pretty. She reaches out to touch one. <laughs> they are very are you pretty. Tall enough to touch one. <laughs> Yeah, some of some of the some of the leaves come down low enough to where you can you can touch them. They're like um think think about the tree stars in Land Before Time. Like they're they're that perfect star-like shape, but they are a a rich blue. All right, but they uh, Charlotte knows these are not apple producing trees. These are not right? apple trees, no. All right. Well, these are fear producing trees. <laughs> these are um This is not an apple orchard. And as yeah. as you're sort of as you're sort of in uh, looking at these things, so so Charlotte goes to look at the shame. tree. Maven, what's what's your first what's your first thing? Maven reached out to touch the freaking leaf. 
Remember? Oh, that's right. So you you me. go over you go over to a tree. You touch a leaf. Uh, Calder, what are you up to in your first he's few there. moments here? Uh, he's examining this canoe. The canoe, it's yes. Hanging from the ceiling, right? Yes, the canoe is hanging from the ceiling. And uh, if you want to make me a history check, this is a very difficult one, though. Yeah, 15, so probably not. Are um, you adding the plus four? That is with the plus four. You, <laughs> yeah, this this looks very much like the kind of vessel that island dwelling um, civilizations have used to get from island to island in in the it primary. Came up in my plane. research about Trump. So. Yeah, so this is this looks very much like an island hopper, basically. Mm. Um, you're not sure how it got here. And you're not sure exactly who made it, but it looks very much like something that a few people would use to cross large amounts of water. Um, Dell, what are you up to? I'm looking disappointedly at the the fucking gun gun car. <laughs> um, go ahead and give me a history check, and you can take advantage because you have knowledge of the planes. Sixteen, yeah. This is a World War Two era yeah. <laughs> Panzer tank. Yes, and I'm not uh, gonna touch it. <laughs> and as you're looking at it, and you're kind of looking, and you hear from the other side of the room, ah, I see that you are very fascinated by the uh, by the prize of our of our collection. And as you turn around through one of those um, one of those entryways, a fucking pit fiend walks into the room and says, please let me know if you have any questions. And with Real that, quick, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Are pit fiends devils or demons? They're demons. Okay. Yeah, this is the, um, the chaos side. Swoops is like, just, huh? <laughs> can, I, can I tell if it's a one, two, three, or a four? Um... You're gonna have to tell me what you mean by that. Uh, the 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 uh, the Panzer tank, tank had had four different in iterations throughout world. Sorry, I've used to play World of Tanks a lot, guys. <laughs> <laughs> like, I am so this. so. You're gonna have to tell me then. This came from Vichy France, so it would have okay. been in the the sort of latter half of the war. Okay, so the four was the only one that was in production and combat throughout the entire war. So it's probably a four. So it's probably a four, yeah. Okay. It could be something else, but it's probably a four. And with the entrance of the curator, we're going to go ahead and end our session for today. I didn't even expect us to get through this many rooms. And I want us to go ahead and leave this on a cliffhanger. So, <laughs> so to be clear, a goddamn arch, arch demon walks in and asks if you have any questions about any of the uh, any of the displays. Um, does, I have a question. Do you all want to give me? Calder's a, yeah, face look like? give me just give me just like ten seconds of your initial reaction before we cut to black. Let's start with Calder. Uh, Calder, is, his eyes go wide and like there is a. It's clear he is fighting a very deep instinct to to uh, attack this thing because he, on one level he is he, do, he doesn't trust this he doesn't trust anything that's going on in this place and secondly that's a fucking pit fiend it will just turn me into a mist uh let's so, go to to so maven like self-preservation fighting with his desire to see demons dead so i'm i'm sharing an image of the pit fiend right now Admittedly, yeah, I think uh, they looked they looked more impressive in previous editions, in my opinion. But yes, like he walks in and is fully like nine feet tall, giant wings, not actually carrying a weapon. In fact, he's carrying some sort of ledger. Like a clipboard. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Does he have like a vest on? Is it like neon? <laughs> no, no, it's 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 not it's it, it's not wearing any clothing. Um, it's just, it's just like, like a, like your usual demon loincloth. Okay. Like free ball of it. <laughs> the name tag on his loincloth. Um, All of a sudden it's into the woods. Maven, you're the one that's closest to this thing. I'd like to know what your immediate response is. Oh my. I 
mean, so the thing is, is Maven. I'm a married man. I'm a married. <laughs> does not know <laughs> how to really deal with any of this. Much of the stuff that she's coming into contact with, she'll only have ever known about in stories. Like, not even going to school, reading books, telling you this is this and this is this. This is basically straight up. She went into Baba Yaga's hut assuming that everything was going to be like in children's stories. And so she is keeping that. In my, so, so, like, she, anything good or bad, like, she knows that it's not, like, like, like it's not, like, a benign place at all. But at the same time, there is a slight general everyone deserves at least one chance in life kind of air to her so she's not going to judge anything just yet but it's it's over twice her size and oh yeah just... oh it's many many times her size yeah. many times uh. her mass so Charlotte, you don't see this thing walk in. All you hear, hear is a, a deep, like, basso voice that is polite and asking if there's anything that you need. But Swoops is going crazy. Yeah, I think the vibe she gets from Swoops is like, oh, it's a party now. Uh, <laughs> so she's like turning around and like oh. is preparing to give the most perfect noble curtsy uh, <laughs> is her reaction. I, uh, permission to be a D&D &D pedant. Please. Uh, Pippins are devils. Are they devils, not demons? They are devils. They reside in hell. Well, shit. <laughs> I'm double checking that. I'm looking. I mean, this yep, those are definitely good. devils. My bad. I thought they were demons. I retcon everything that I said, and in the YouTube video, I will try to put up a little subtext that says demons or that says devils. Yes, this is from the Nine Hells. So, so Calder, you recognize something that is a little bit beneath the um, the emissary that was sent to you before your um, your your meeting with your mother, they're, but also they're about, they're about equivalent in rank. Um. And then, so, so Charlotte, uh, so, so Swoops, so Swoops is, is still, happy. yeah, Swoops is still like going crazy, but not in a good way. Yeah, Swoops is giving the vibes of like, oh man, fucking yeah. party poopers are here. <laughs> Charlotte is still preparing to give a very polite curtsy. And I think I, Swoops is like hiding in her dress. <laughs> now, Del, Del's uh, general vibe hasn't, hasn't changed, but just because it's a, a devil, not a demon. I want to be uh, clear about that. It's still a squinty eye and like a low, like hand goes yeah, to Yeah, it's weapon. still a fiend. Uh, it's still like a murderous motherfucker that's going to die if I, I get the chance. I am pretty sure Calder is having ha, is mirroring Dell in that moment of, their, of like, he is anticipating that this is a thing he's going to have to fight, ultimately. Dell like just fucking swung on Warbo without, without indicating mm. that he was going to do so beforehand. Yeah, Calder was prepping a disintegration beam, so we're on the same wave like there too. Yeah. No. Oh my lord! And before before the pit fiend reacts to your reaction, we are going to end our session, yeah. and we're going to go ahead and jump over to the post game because I imagine we've got some ah. stuff to talk about over there. So we're going to do that right now. Ah.